Yay, you guys. It's Mrs. Klein. It's me. It's Mrs. Wilbrin. We are here with your Lesson 10 podcast, which is entitled The Bill of Rights. Uh, if you want to follow along in your history book, uh, the Lesson 10 begins on page 183. Yep. And the guiding question uh, for this lesson is what freedoms does the Bill of Rights protect and why are they important? Okay, there also are the uh, vocabulary words again, you guys. This time around, they are Bill of Rights, Defendant, Double Jeopardy, Due Process, Self-Incrimination, and Warrant. All right. So here we go. Um, as you guys remember, the adoption of the Constitution depended on ratification or approval by nine of the 13 states. Ratification started off smoothly, but in, Miss in Massachusetts, opposition rang st ran strong. Opponents objected to the Constitution's lack of rights for the people, and many delegates refused to support ratification unless such rights were added. Yeah, so in this lesson, you're going to learn how Federalists kept their promise to add a list of rights to the Constitution. You will also learn about the freedoms protected by the Bill of Rights and why they are important. All right, moving on to section one, which is all about creating the Bill of Rights. All right, so by 1791, you guys, the required number of states, nine, had approved the other 10 amendments, okay? All right, the, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. Together, these 10 amendments form the Bill of Rights. Okay, so we're gonna talk about each of the amendments. So let's talk, start talking about um, First Amendment rights. Now, James Madison combined five basic freedoms into the First Amendment. These are the freedoms of religion, speech, the press, and assembly, and the right to petition the government. When a person believes that the government has violated these rights, or any rights protected in the Constitution, he or she may challenge the government's action in court. If the case reaches the Supreme Court, the nine Supreme Court justices decide how the Constitution applies to the situation. Okay, now there are five parts to this First Amendment. Um, so the First Amendment has two guarantees of religious freedom. The first says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And this means that Congress cannot make any faith the official religion of the United States, nor can it make laws that favor one religion over another. All right, the second religious guarantee in the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion. This means that people can hold any religious beliefs without fear of punishment. Right, okay, now also in the First Amendment, um, we have protections of freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Freedom of the press is important because it is a vital role that the press plays in a democratic society. All right. Freedom of the press also brings responsibilities such as taking care not to spread false accusations or publish information that would be helpful to an enemy in wartime. Freedom of speech brings responsibilities as well. Although the First Amendment protects the right to speak freely in public places like streets and parks, that right is not unlimited. Yeah. Okay. Now, also part of this First Amendment is the right to assemble and petition. So these final two rights protected in the First Amendment, well, I'm going to say it again, mm -hmm. are the right to peaceably assemble, that's meet together with others, and to petition or appeal to the government. While the First Amendment protects peaceful meetings, it does not give people the right to close streets or buildings to protest violent or, or to protest violently. Yeah. All right, guys, now we're going to move on to citizen protections. And the next three amendments protect citizens from various kinds of government abuse. All three amendments reflect the experience of American colonists under British rule. Mm -hmm. So that had a big impact on why they chose these to yeah. add to be a part of the Bill of Rights. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the Second Amendment. Uh, the Second Amendment states, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed upon or limited. Okay. The meaning of this amendment has been much debated. Some people argue that it protects the right of people to own guns only if they are part of an organized militia. Others believe that the Second Amendment uh, protects the rights of individuals to own weapons for their own self-defense. In 2008, the Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment protects an individual's right to own a gun for personal use including self-defense inside the home. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Third Amendment. And you guys remember, before the American Revolution, Great Britain had forced colonists to house British soldiers. The Third Amendment gave Americans the right to refuse such requests. Today, soldiers are not quartered in homes. The Third Amendment remains important, however, 
as a warning to the government to respect the privacy of people's homes. All right, now the Fourth Amendment, searches and seizures. The Fourth Amendment protects people and their belongings from unreasonable searches and seizures. Before arresting a person or searching someone's home, police must show a judge that there is good reason for such action. The judge then issues a warrant that says exactly who will be arrested or what will be searched. Okay, now the next four amendments that we're gonna talk about lay out the rights and protections that apply to people who are accused of crimes or are involved in other legal disputes. The Fifth Amendment is the longest amendment in the Bill of Rights. It lists five important rights of citizens involved with the justice system. First, this amendment gives people who are accused of serious crimes the right to a grand jury hearing. Second, the amendment protects citizens from double jeopardy. This protection ensures that a person who is tried for a crime and found not guilty cannot be tried again for the same crime. And third, the amendment prohibits self-incrimination. This means that police cannot force people to say things they might that might be used against them in a trial. Okay, all right, moving on. Next, the Fifth Amendment says that a person cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The government must follow clear rules and act, re and act reasonably as it carries out the law. Finally, the Fifth Amendment says that the government cannot take someone's private property for public use without just compensation. Just compensation means that the government must pay a fair price when it takes over a person's property for purposes such as building roads or parks. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Sixth Amendment. Um, the Sixth Amendment lists a number of rights that are designed to provide accused persons with fair trials. It begins with the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury. Okay. Okay. And I think that's, we'll just move on to the seventh. Yeah. Okay. So the Seventh Amendment um, deals with civil trial rights. The Seventh Amendment says that in all but most minor cases, people involved in a civil case have a right to a jury trial. Okay. And the Eighth Amendment protects an accused person's rights both before and after trial. Before a trial, it forbids a judge from demanding excessive bail. And after a trial, if a person is found guilty, the Eighth Amendment forbids excessive fines and cruel and unusual punishments. All right, moving on, you guys, to um, other rights and powers. So now we're going to talk about the Ninth Amendment. Um, this has to do with rights retained by the people. The Ninth Amendment provides the answer by saying that even though certain rights are listed in the Constitution, other rights and liberties not listed there are also retained or kept by the people. The rights protected under the Constitution are not the only rights people have. An example of this is the right to privacy. Yeah. And last one, the Tenth Amendment, powers reserved to the states. The Tenth Amendment was included to protect the states from excessive federal power. It says that powers not given to the national government by the Constitution are reserved to the states, or in other words, to, to the, the people. people. So again, it's kind of like that federalism shared power between the federal government and the states. Exactly. All right, you guys, in this lesson, we learned about the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, and the important freedoms that it protects. Yeah. Shall we go through our review? Sure, let's go. All right. Creating the Bill of Rights. Um, but by 1791, nine of the 13 states had ratified 10 amendments drafted by James Madison and approved by Congress. These 10 amendments form the Bill of Rights. All right, the First Amendment protects five basic freedoms, the right to worship freely, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and the rights to assemble and petition the government. Okay, the Second, Third, and Fourth Amendment protect people against the abuse of government power. All right, the fifth through the eighth amendments are intended to guarantee fair treatment for people involved in legal actions. And the ninth and 10th amendments concern the relationship among the federal government, the states and the people. The ninth amendment protects rights that are not expressly listed in the constitution. And the 10th amendment says that powers that are neither given to the national government um, nor forbidden to the states belong to the states and the people. Okay, all right, you guys, remember that guiding question that we've got um, was what freedoms does the Bill of Rights protect and why are they important? And I think after listening to this, you got a pretty good, a pretty good jump on, on understanding that. Yeah, you guys have got this. All right, you're the best.